Good morning. We have at least one announcement in addition to what's in the bulletin. Maybe has said that next Saturday at 2 o'clock, we will, here's a new word for you, de-Christmas the church. We take all the equipment stuff in. And we're going to need some strong backs. Weak minds will be okay, but strong backs are necessary to carry some of the stuff. So if you would, please, 2 o'clock next Saturday right here. Any other announcements? All right, let's prepare our hearts for worship. Would you please join me in the call to worship that's in your booth? I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with arms of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. The Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. 
For Zion's sake, I will prophesy. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will prophesy. Let us bow in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty and gracious God, we do thank you that we have the opportunity to come here together and worship in freedom, to worship with joy, and to know that you are here with us because we are gathered in your name. Hear us as we join our hearts in prayer and as we lift to you petitions that come before us. May all that we do, all that we say, give glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. from all unrighteousness. So if you would please join me in the corporate prayer of confession that's in your bullet. Almighty, forgiving and merciful creator and sustainer of life, we come to you today as we face a new and fearfully unknown year of often dark and sinful <clears throat> See through our weaknesses and by your Holy Spirit, Fill us with courage beyond ourselves. Lord, deliver us from us. Here now our personal prayers of confession. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you that you have heard us and stand ready to meet our concerns. Amen. The good news of the gospel is that God knows our sins and yet stands ready to forgive us and to restore us to the fullness of joy through the Spirit of Jesus our Lord. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven.
Because we, because we are forgiven, we wave to one another, greet one another, and also the folks that are at home who gathered around their TVs this morning. to help us to buy different project things. So if you want to go help gather them up, thank you. Oh, Lacey Emma's got you going good. Thank you, dear. She walked in this morning and I said, by the way, what are you preaching on this morning? She looked at me like, what? She wasn't really supposed to. I just tried to. But she really did a good job treating us this past Christmas. So. got them all. You go ahead and put them in the tubes back there. Good helpers and do appreciate it. Well, I know that at Christmas time you always get asked, What did you get for Christmas? My question is for this new year that's coming up, which is starting today, what are you looking forward to in the new year? Maybe something you've never done. Yeah. My birthday. Your birthday? That's a good thing. It comes around every year, doesn't it? It's a good thing to look forward to. The snow. I think we had enough snow last week. <laughs> but if you want some more, more power to you. But, well, you know, there's not a whole lot that comes in South Carolina. That's what I was told by my wife when we were thinking about moving down here about four years ago. And we said, oh, it never snows in South Carolina. The first time we were here, it snowed. And I mean, it snowed quickly and filled everything up. And it was an interesting thing. What else? Anything else? I don't have anything. You don't have anything you're looking forward to? Okay, what? <laughs> You still like Christmas ice, okay. That's good. Ice, yeah. Oh, Valen, have you got a boyfriend? No, maybe I shouldn't ask. That's too private, isn't it? Yeah. Our dog's birthday is on Valentine's Day. You got a dog whose birthday's on Valentine's Day. What's your dog's name? Annie. Annie, oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I understand how that works sometimes, yeah. I don't always know when my birthday is. I, I get reminded, though, hey, you got a birthday coming up. Uh-oh. That means i got to be good. Isn't it? Yours is a long time away. When is your birthday? It's May 28th. Oh, you were so close. You almost won the, the, the lottery today. Mine's the 20th of May. Just missed yours. Yours in June. Well, boy, we've got a good variety here. 
Okay. Well, you know, the, the good thing about having birthdays and other things that we face in life is that we're not doing it alone. I looked up and saw Blue standing up here this morning. I felt so good because I'm not up there having to leave the music myself. Does a good job, doesn't he? And my wife the same way. So when you think about your birthday, just know that you don't have to celebrate all by yourself. You've got friends who come in and help you. And when you've got friends, boy, it's a lot better, I think. Yeah. Tomorrow's your brother's birthday. Okay. You going to help celebrate? Okay. You can celebrate other people's birthdays too. All right. Shall we give thanks for the things that are coming up that God's going to supply for us? Okay. And will be with us too. Okay. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for joyful times that we can celebrate, be it birthdays or maybe Christmas once a year. For whatever comes our way, we thank you that you enhance what happens in our lives and make life a lot better. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Lacey Emma's going to take you over to your class. Yeah, yay. She's a lot better to look at it than I am anyway. Okay, oh, no. keep forgetting I've got a microphone, so excuse me if I hit the button. If you would, please turn to Luke chapter 8. This is a fairly familiar story. Beginning at verse 23. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. That's what I do when we travel a lot, too. I just go to sleep. It's a good thing. Now, a squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up. He rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided, and all was calm. Where's your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this man? That he can calm even the winds and the water. And they obey him. Maybe pray just a moment, please. Lord God, now take your word and make it a part of our own history and our own future. I thank you for the assurance that you're going to be with us no matter what the storm may be. Keep us mindful of how much you love us and how much you're willing to do to protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll confess to you, I am an avid book lover. I have books everywhere. Fortunately, my father was good with woodworking, and so he built me a lot of shelves. But I found out when I got down here, I still don't have enough shelves. But before I moved to Lexington from Kingsport, I gave away over 300 books. When I moved down here, not quite as many, maybe 30 or 40 books that I gave away. I've still got some more, so if y'all meet me at the house, uh, no, we, we won't do that till later. This is one of my favorites, and I've got it with me because I want you to think about it. When was your first book? Does anybody remember? I can remember being not even in grade school yet and having books to read. I was four or five years old, and I started the reading thing. And I looked at all the best-selling titles that I got here. Uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The Teddy Bear of Bumpkin Holler. Anybody remember that one? I do. And uh, also the Pokey Little Puppy. I dedicate that one to Todd because he just got a new puppy. And... Disney, of course, produced lots of books that I got. 
and some of them are still in my repertoire. I moved on from there to going into grade school, and the stories became stories about real people, no more cartoons and stuff. Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, who lived not very far from our house, to tell you the truth, just a few couple of hours at the most, and uh, Kit Carson, all those people that lived and made this country something special. When I was in the sixth grade, I don't usually remember many things from my sixth grade, but my teacher, who happened to be a minister also, he wrote in my little book that they give you to put all the, the uh, pictures in of your classmates, said 2 Timothy 2.15. I thought, well, why is, a, why is a preacher or a teacher putting scripture in my book? So I looked it up. And it says, study to show yourself approved unto God, one who does not need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. And so that's sort of been my call from then on. Read and understand and work. Went on to high school. I got into things like 007, a little more adventuresome. Astronauts. The World Book Encyclopedia. I remember that one very well. We gave away a whole, a whole set of encyclopedia when we moved down here. After so long a time, and just before I graduated, I got a, a special gift, about that thick, about like that. And it was called The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. It became one of my favorites, and I still have it in my list today. Occasionally drop back and read a small portion of it, like one play or something like that. But those were things that progressed with me. And then got into college, and there were things that, that came about, like uh, C.S. Lewis, Martin Luther, John Calvin, my professors who wrote their own books. That made it even tougher to try to cheat on them. They knew what the book said. But college and seminary just continued to fill us up with books. My wife's very grateful for that because she doesn't have to worry about reading them herself. But since then, I've read books like John Maxwell's books. Of course, they're primarily about ministry. Charles Swindoll. And this guy. Max Lucado. I have probably heard this name mispronounced more than any other I've ever known. He said, Lucado. No, that's not Lucado. Lucado. He is a minister down in Texas and does a good job of sharing the scripture with us. And as I was thinking ahead this morning, or today, about this morning, uh, I recalled a recent past experience in one of his books about a storm. And to tell you the truth, that's what's been on my mind. What's this next year going to be? Is it going to be a storm? Because we're hearing that the economy's out, all this, that, and the other going bad. What are we going to do if it all comes about? Because I don't think we can afford to get very many of those things fulfilling what they say is going to happen. So I went over and I took out, there's a section about this high, right about eye level, called Max Locato. And all his books, there's about eight or ten of them that I've got. He's written many, many more about 50 on first class. He said, in one of his interviews, he said, what he does, he takes all his sermon notes and things like that, and then compacts them or redoes them into a book. And then it gets published and produced. So he does about four books a year. I'm still working on my first one. I haven't quite gotten there yet, but anyway. I found the book again, and I looked about the story of the storm. 
And I want to share with you a little bit about what I found in that. And I laid them somewhere. Underneath the book. No, it's not. Max Licato's book. See, that's what my wife's for. If I'm playing golf and lose the golf ball, she goes and finds it. There we go. Hey, it's a lot better to read like this. Max writes about his situation. And he said, Floridians don't have to be told to duck when a hurricane is on the warpath. Windows are taped up, canned goods were bought, flashlights were tested, and David was about to pounce. Hurricane David took place a long time ago, but he still wrote about this story. He said a bunch of guys in a houseboat, which was nothing more than a rustic cabin on top of a leaky barge. He described it as the McHale's Navy rerun. They brought every rope up to the Queen Mary, which is their affectionate name, and they tied the boat to trees, to moorings, and tied to just about anything they could find, even to herself. And it looked like it was caught in a spider web. A lot of rope involved, obviously. Now, the houseboat happened to be Max's houseboat. And he was very much concerned about what was going on. He had owned the boat for a grand total of three monthly payments. So you're looking at something that probably still owes a lot on. And he says, they were in the Miami River, and they were trying to figure out the best way to protect the boat. Desperate. All I can think is I tie her down. And then along came Phil. Phil looked boat-wise. I don't know what that means if you're boat-wise, but I'll take it for granted. He looked boat-wise. Wise. And he said, leave the rope slack and pray for the best. I'll tell you the end of it in a moment. Now the rest of the story. In this story, he makes a comparison to what they were facing, all the hurricane and everything, the disruption of life to six hours on the cross, which is what Jesus spent when he was crucified. But it's a very critical time in history. It ended up that the, the storm with much thanks to, to God's mercy. The storm went by, turned up the coast, and did not cross over into Miami. They were very thankful for that. But he said the things that he learned from that, number one, and these are the things that, that I give you today, one, two, three, make it real simple, three things to work through the storms. Number one, realize that your life is not futile. God has something in store, and it's very special. Anybody make fail, fail, failures? Anybody? I do. And the second thing he says to do is know that my failures are not fatal. God loves you for what you are, not for what you do. And number three, my death is not final. Those three things, no futile life, no 
finality to failure, especially no finality to death. I don't know how you stand by that or how you make it through, but that's how he made it through and passed those three things along for us to learn and deal with. I don't know what 2023 is going to give to us as people. It may be just a dull year. Most of mine are not. Usually something I've been doing has fallen apart. Where, and my son has big plans. He's one of those Marines that has you know, this kind of vision. And he's seeing things that I'm not seeing, but I'm going to trust he's going to make it through and get it done. Any of you that want to do woodworking, come on over. We've got plenty of trees to take down. But know that whatever it might be, whether we can understand it or not, we know that God is going to be with us. There's a song, not the one that right now we're going to do, but one that I want to share with you. This may not be one that you know, but it could be. B.E. King wrote a, book, wrote a song called Stand By Me. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see, no, I won't be afraid. Oh, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand by me. And this is more of a love song than it is a religious one. But it says, oh darling, darling, stand by me. If the sky be dark, should trouble fall, or the mountain should crumble to the sea. I won't cry, I won't cry. Oh, I won't shed a tear just as long as you stand by me. That's a good song for somebody who is in love and has somebody. That's why I said it's so important for me to have Blue up here standing beside me, and even more important to have Jane standing beside me. Very special. But there is a song that's written by Ray Boltz. And I have to set this up as a story first. Because in 1999, this is a tough thing. Our daughter, our oldest daughter, who was going to graduate school out in Kansas, She died at the age of 27. And to say the least, it was the toughest year I had ever had. Everything seemed to be going well. And we were out with our choir doing our rounds of sharing Christmas carols. And I got a call from my wife. Normally she would have been there with us, but she had a little cold. She didn't want to infect anybody else, so... She stayed at home. My dad was a heart patient. We didn't know what his condition might be. But as we were driving back to a choir director's house where we were going to party together as we usually did on Christmas, I got a call. And my wife said, get home now. No explanation, just get home now. And so when I got home, which was only a few minutes away, I ran inside and I said, is it dad? And she said, no, it's Lee. We lost our 27-year-old daughter, a doctor, the hardest time we had been through since our marriage. As I was driving through a, a town nearby, not particularly listening to the radio, but I generally have something on. And this song came on. 
And when it did, I knew that was a song that I needed to listen to every word. And the words go like this. I have journeyed through the long, dark night out on the open sea by faith alone, sight unknown. And yet his eyes were watching me. The anchor holds. Though the ship is battered, the anchor holds, though the sails are torn. I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. I've had visions. I've had dreams. I've even held them in my hands. But I never knew they would slip right through like they were only grains of sand. And he does the chorus again. The anchor holds though the ship is battered. The anchor holds though the sails are torn. I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. I have been young, but I am older now. And there has been beauty that these eyes have seen. But it was in the night, through the storms of my life, that is where God showed his love to me. The anchor holds. And that last line, I have fallen on my knees as I faced the raging seas. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. Those are words of assurance. I don't know what this future year will hold. But for sure and certain more than anything else, I believe that Jesus Christ will be with us every step of the way. And there may be some tattered places on our sails. The boat may be battered, but the anchor holds. Jane, if you would, I can't do this thing without her with me. She holds my hand through a lot of different things that we've gone through, this being the toughest. Todd wrote me a letter and asked if I was going to be doing something today, and I said, if Jane helps me. So I give thanks for this lady. It's okay, Todd. Through the long dark night Through the open sea By faith alone Sight alone And yet his eyes were watching me. The, the anchor holds. Though the ship is battered, the anchor holds. 
Though the sails are torn, I have fallen on my knees as I faced the raging seas. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. I've had vision I've had dreams I've even held them in my hands I never knew Those storms slip right through Like they were only grains of sand The anchor holds Of the ship is battered The anchor holds Though the sails are torn I have fallen on my knees As I face the raging seas The anchor holds I have been young I'm older now There has been beauty These eyes have seen It was in the night Through the storms of my life That's where God proved His love for me Though the ship is battered, the anchor holds. Though the sails are torn, I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging. Bow for a moment of prayer, please. Lord, when life gets rough, 
we have a sure and certain anchor in our Lord Jesus Christ. Teach us to rely upon his stability, upon his love, and upon his willingness to help us through every situation. And we will give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you hear me? God, you got glory to God, ready to go? Uh, got glory to God? The, yes. So, okay, uh, thank you. Prayers. Oh, are there any other prayers and concerns? Those we did put in the bulletin, I'm thinking they're probably still in there. Okay, let's, let's do the course. I get when I get three faces. I do want to tell you that that is the hardest song I've ever tried to do. We've done it several times over many churches, but it never gets any easier. And it's been over 20 years. There is an affirmation of faith that's listed here. I'd ask you to stand and join me, please. In the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We have a young lady out here in the congregation, Michelle. We're very glad to have you with us today to worship. We're going to be doing a service for her husband this week and need your prayers of support for that. Are there others? Always remember, when you got support like this in the Lord Jesus Christ, we got it made. Let's bow in prayer, and if I give the response, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Lord, you know every concern that's here. You know every person, more than we even know ourselves. But you know our needs. You know our joys. You know everything about us. And you love us greatly. And so we ask you, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We have an uncertain year ahead of us. We don't have any roadmap about where to go. We don't have a GPS to direct us like we'd like. But the still small voice of your spirit speaks to us and tells us, based on what we know of your scripture, what is right, what is wrong, how we can touch others with our lives. So please, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give you thanks especially today that we can celebrate in the midst of the storms of life 
because you're in charge and nothing is going to come against us that you can't handle. And so we give you thanks for all our blessings and ask you to have mercy upon us. Hear our prayers. The Lord has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Oh, you all sound good this morning. Remember, choir practice every Sunday morning, 9 o'clock. Come on over. Love to have you. Just for Todd. May the grace, the mercy, and the peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit go with you and keep you now and forevermore. Amen.